my third grade. I have my social studies book out, and I've got my workbook right next to me. <clears throat> and we're going to go in and do our lesson for today. And it's on page 168 and 169 that we're going to read. We're going to be learning about sources. Sources are used to compile information, to learn about something, especially like a historic or scientific event. <clears throat> and there are two different types of sources that we're going to talk about. Primary, meaning firsthand, you were there, you saw it, you took the photograph, you wrote the journal, you wrote the letter. And then there are secondary. Maybe you painted a picture in your mind of what an event looked like in what you think based on the descriptions or pictures that you've seen. So let's take a look. Why it matters. People use both primary sources and secondary sources to learn about history. So a primary source Prime is number one. It's primary. It's right there. It's a record made by people who saw or took part in an event. It could be a letter, a diary entry, a photograph or picture. It could be a film or a movie of a primary source, or a film or a movie of the event. The next thing we have is called a secondary, and you see two, second is two, so that is a little bit more removed. A secondary source is a record of an event that was made by a person who was not there. An encyclopedia article is an example of a secondary source. A biography is a secondary source. But an autobiography that I write myself, that would be a primary source. So let's take a look. The record below is part of the I Have a Dream speech made by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The photo below shows him making this speech. Whoever took that photo was there at the time. They had to have had their camera out now we have our phones with our cameras on our phone. They had to have their camera out. They had to be there to see that event. That is a primary resource. Now we see the picture of the speech. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. actually wrote that speech. He typed it up and then he wrote notes on the sides. And that is a primary source. He was there when he wrote that speech. And then there's a Nobel Peace Prize, which he won in 1964. He was there. There's a record of it. That's a primary resource. Now, let's take a look. Secondary resources, we're going to go right to the bottom of the page here, so we're kind of looking across. Number four, a secondary recess about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. <clears throat> includes, number four, a website. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was not alive when websites were being constructed. We were not using computers back in the 60s the way we are using them today. Sometimes they were like great big massive computers that were used for scientific um, exploration and such, but Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. probably never used a computer and he certainly didn't have a website. So that is a secondary resource where somebody else gathered the information and put it together on a website along with some pictures and photographs and maybe some graphic organizers and they put it out there so that they could share that information with us. That's secondary. And also reference books. So you see the boy is reading Happy Birthday Martin Luther King Jr. 
you remember that when we wrote our reports on famous African Americans, that we used secondary resources. We used books about the person. We went to websites to learn more about the person. But we weren't able to be there to see it in person or to talk to the person. So those were secondary resources that we used. So at the top it says practice. Use the primary and secondary sources on these pages to answer these questions. Which images show primary resources? Well, I think we already figured out that the photograph is a primary resource because the photographer was there. He saw Martin Luther King Jr. We also decided the speech is a primary resource. Dr. Martin Luther King wrote that himself. And that medal from the Nobel Prize, that's something that he could pick up and feel and hold. It's real. It's there. He received that. He was there. That's a primary resource. Now, when we go onto a website, we might see a copy of Dr. Martin Luther King's speech. And we might read about his life and his death and all of his contributions. We might see some pictures of him. We might see several pictures of him. But those are in a website. We were not there. We are reading about him later. Those are secondary resources, just like the book was. Okay, so we're going to take a look now in our, re <coughs> in our social studies workbook. And it's on page 46. It says, compare primary and secondary resources. Each item in the first box below is a source of information. So there are several sources of information in this box, and I'll read through them with you. Identify whether each one is a primary source, we'll write it here, or a secondary source, we'll write it here. And we're going to abbreviate. So let's see, a photograph. Well. If I'm the photographer and I took that picture, I was there when it happened, I'm going to put photograph, or I can just write photo under primary source. Photo, P-H-O-T-O. -O. Next is a book about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He didn't write it. Maybe it was written by someone last year. Are you going to put that book under primary or secondary? Write book about MLK. The next one says journal of someone on the Oregon Trail. Now, people traveled west along a trail called the Oregon Trail. They were heading to Oregon. They were heading west, and they rode in these wagons, like we learned about schooners and um, Conestoga wagons in one of the stories that we read. And the trail actually is still there. My son had gone hiking, and he sent me a picture, and you can see where the wheel ruts ground into the earth. And so you can still see the path that these early pioneers 200 years ago, rode on their wagons, pulled by horses or oxen. So somebody who was actually on that wagon kept a journal or like a diary, and they wrote down what they saw. They maybe drew some pictures in it. They were there. So is the journal a primary resource? or a secondary resource. Write journal where it belongs. The next one, a film 
of an event. It's the actual event. We were there filming it. I was there. Is my film primary or secondary? An observer's drawing. An observer is somebody who sees. When you observe something, you're looking at it. So they were looking at this event and they drew a picture. So the drawing is that primary or secondary. I was there and I was drawing what I saw. Next, a painting of an event by someone who was there. I was there when I saw it and I quickly took out my paints and I painted a picture to go with what the event, what was happening at the event. I was there. So are you going to put painting of event under primary or secondary? Painting of event. Write all three words, painting of event. Because we have another thing about painting. The next one, a film based on an event. So it's based on an event, but I wasn't necessarily there. I maybe read about it and heard about it and saw pictures of it. And then I made a film based on the event. So is the film based on the event a primary or a secondary resource? I was not there. Now you already have film of an event where you were there. Now this is film based on an event. So make sure that you write that differently. Next, we have a movie about a famous writer. Maybe it was Dr. Seuss, and we watched a movie about him. He's a famous writer. Maybe it was Charles M. Schultz. He's a famous writer. He wrote the Snoopy cartoons. Maybe it was Judy Bloom. She's an author of books that we like. It's about her. It's a movie about her. I might have interviewed her, but I didn't necessarily interview her. I might have based it on information that I got off the internet, stories I'd read about her, movies of hers that I had seen, books that I have read. So this movie, is it primary or secondary? And the last one, painting based on an event in history. So let's say I decide that I am going to do a painting of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the way I think it looked. Am I there? That was in 1776 more than 200 years ago. I don't think I was there, but I have this idea in my head of what it might have looked like. So I'm going to paint what I think it looked like. Think about the Last Supper, the painting of the Last Supper. The painter lived a thousand, more than a thousand years after Jesus. So he couldn't have been there, but based on what he's heard and what he's read in the Bible, he has painted a picture based on that event. So is that primary or secondary? All right, be sure to take a picture and send it to me when you're finished.